Welcome to Chris Evans Radio. We are back with little Dave, and it is late on a Wednesday night. <laughs> well, late for me, not for you. <laughs> yeah, it's just Wednesday night-ish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely dark here and hot. So yeah. Um, so guys, let's let's go ahead and get right into this. Um, you know, I'm training hard in the offseason. Dave's still in a good spot clicking along with prep. Nothing new to report. Looking big and freaky. What we knew was going to happen. <laughs> yeah, you had a PR on deadlifts. What yesterday? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was very, I was very happy about that. That that this entire, uh, entire prep, actually the entire prep, I've been around that eight nine rep range on deadlifts, and then today I just smoked the shit out of it. Oh yeah. Well, that was yesterday I did, but yeah, yeah. it was really good. But that that lift, that squats, dumbbell rows. Anytime you like strap in and just rip that first rep you're like oh this is gonna be good <laughs> like yeah really good day th- those are the ones i've always thought like you don't want to end you want to just like stay in that groove stay in that groove <laughs> mm-hmm. there's something about like where you are in a prep where food's no longer super low you're getting consistent feedings um yeah everything's clicking and you've been in such a great groove of meals for so long without detriment or miss i always just feel like that's what i always will think about i was like just you just feel like a machine and yeah it feels like you could run through a wall head first and the okay. wall would say sorry like <laughs> oh yeah 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 sadly so many don't get there i don't think because they don't get in that groove and mm-hmm. it, yes some of daily tasks may feel harder at times but like when you're in that gym and you can turn everything in your brain off. Like that's such a magical time. Um, it really is. And that's what I think I miss. Like when you're, when I'm not competing of just feeling that locked in and everything you do, you see or feel, you know? Yeah. Like, if I and take my carbs up a hundred tomorrow, I wouldn't really tell a difference. Yeah. If, if I take your carbs up a hundred or down a hundred, you know, and see a difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, that's the, probably the best part about, getting ready for a show is the the little changes you can see in your body and just like how you, you know, like an extra tablespoon of peanut butter is like the, your body does some crazy shit. You're like all, all of a sudden vascular is, you know, your vascular, you know, that meal, like if you have it with carbs, right, you're just going to be full as fuck. You're like, cool. That was a hundred calories. <laughs> right. Right. Or you get like that huge carb feeding and you're like responding, texting on your phone. You're like, have a hand pump. And you're like, oh, this is good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again, so many don't know that. Like they haven't experienced like, oh, uh, Chris, that's a fucking Cero pump in your hands. No, 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 no. Like there's a big difference in those two things. But like when you get a lot of carbs back in and you just like do simple shit, like you put Arctic bomb on your shoulders and you're pumped. It's like, <laughs> it's going to be fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and hey, you go to the gym you train you, you do two sets of side laterals and you can't touch your head correct yes yes which is like everything's clicking and on point everywhere and you know what's funny is i think people hear us might say that I'm like oh like it's not not that way off for you guys year round like aren't you always on point it's like yes we always nail the plan but the body isn't as dialed in and, and just in the groove mm-hmm. as you are right now it's just not yeah. and I, you can't, sadly there's no science study that can articulate that unless you've experienced it yeah and you know listen that's yeah. why you know, i love body boning it's fun well especially for you know like it's kind of laughable but like that one always like people like going out of out of their way to measure their blood glucose like especially in the off season they're like oh it's creeping up and it's like it should be you're pushing food right like yeah. it you need like your body is does not like the, what you're doing to it. That's why you're f- making a change happen. But like those numbers probably should start not being, like, I'm not saying they need to be shitty. Right. And if they go up super fast, you're doing something wrong, but they should be creeping up at the, you know, towards the end of your off season. Cause then what happens after that, you pull it back down, yep. you know, or you adjust, you know, that's kind of like, it's, you're basically alternating between, gas pedal floored and gas pedal halfway on you know and there are even times where if you take your foot off the gas pedal you're still moving in the right direction as long as you're not slamming your feet down on the brakes like shit's still gonna happen oh yeah yep 
you know, it's really funny. Like I I reached a point three weeks ago where food was like to the point where I had to think about it to get it all in. And you know, like that's not fun. <laughs> and uh-huh. then our all-star baseball picked up and we're doing four hard practices for two hours a night, plus two additional optional practices of two hours. And I got in the gym last week and Chaz was filming and he was like, did you pull your food down? And I'm like, no. He's like, you're so much harder this week. And I was like, you have to all this damn baseball practice. <laughs> yep. My activity went this way by a ton. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, and my meals suddenly are like, go like, I, I don't have to think about meals. It's just like, yeah. I'm gonna hatch. And I'm like, okay, yes, I'm probably, I'm probably pushing myself further in a deficit by that much movement, but I'm happy that my meals are not a, near of a struggle. Yeah. yeah. So, well, it's also another thing that like, you know, people like all the time in prep, it's like you know, people will be like, oh, you can have really high activity and keep your food moderate or you have less activity, but lower food. It's like, well, if you drive your activity sky high, yes, your food has to come up, but yep. other things are going to start to break too. Yes. Yep. Right. If your body can't handle the activity, good luck. Because yep. then you're going to get a stress response, which is going to make your food it, unable to function for you. And that's when, like, suddenly a plate starts coming off the leg press or the hack squat. Yeah. They don't understand why. What's well, yep. press? And they justify it. Like, no, it was the 47,000 steps you got in yesterday. Yeah. No wonder your legs are tired and beat to shit. Oh, I took a four-hour hike with my boyfriend up the side of a mountain. And my glutes aren't nearly this, as full as they were. Yeah, shocker, right? Yeah. <laughs> Super true. All right, so I posted a Q&A that Chaz and I were going to film for YouTube, uh, but there were some really great questions in here. So I thought Chaz and I already had the con- all the content. We filmed six videos today. I didn't need to do any more with him. So I thought, well, you know what? Let's save these questions for the podcast because they're all really high quality. Um, so let me kick this off. I'll just read them off my Q&A. And Dave, you can answer first here. It says, can you talk about um, three of the most important lessons you learned from John Meadows? So... It doesn't have to be three. It can be 10 or two. I don't care. Yeah. Oh, man. The Probably the biggest one is friends and family are going to be your biggest resources in this sport. And, like, you need to treat it that way. That does not mean you need to have yourself have off plan meals. But be a nice person goes a really long way, right? Yep. You know, things you choose to do in prep, what could make you – you know, quote unquote, a jerk. That's your choice. Yep. Like you're, it's, it's not, nothing's making you be an asshole other than yourself. Yep. So being mindful of that is probably the biggest thing I saw from him. You know, just his very, very good at just maintaining being nice yes. and honest. Yeah. You know, uh, he never was a guy who would just, you know, he would he would tell you how it is. If you asked him what he thought of you on stage, he'd be like, "You were this, and this, this, this needs to fix. Yep. We can do this, this, that better, right?" Yep. Yep. It's not going to sugarcoat it. Just straight, brutal, honest truth. Yes. Um, then lastly, I mean, like shit. That's like the fun part is the hard work aspect of the side of things. Yeah. The uh, that was a, you know, YouTube wise watching him train back in. Back when he was putting like Antoine through shit, and it was just like, yeah. this guy's just wrecking a twenty-something-year-old professional bodybuilder. <laughs> you yep. know, like there, you know, I wonder where. How did he find those levels? What did he do to do that? You know. All right, so all those are incredible, and I am a thousand percent on board for those. So I'm gonna give some different ones um, because I could talk about this for a whole hour, right? Like, yeah. Number one for me is humility. And what I mean by that is not only his physique, but his intelligence was such next level. And he never made you feel that way. (laughs) You know, like when I trained with him the first time, I was 24 and teeny. He didn't give a fuck. He wanted to see if I was willing to work. And on the other side of that, whenever we sit down and talk training or nutrition or gear, supplements, whatever, like, if I asked him good quality questions, he responded 
in turn with so much passion that it was contagious, right? Like no question was stupid. And he would go on in detail. And that didn't matter if like some young kid came up to us when we were walking around Kroger or an expo or at a booth, like he would take time and answer and, and really speak and have genuine connections with people. And man, for, for someone who looked as like an absolute freak show and had put decades of hard work in both on the education side, but also in the trenches, I know people hate in the trenches, like in the fucking gym, right? Like that, that taught me so much. And I think a lot of times when people ask me those questions, they're always looking for like training things that he taught me. And, and again, that, that could be a whole other fucking podcast. <laughs> um, you know, he brought things to this industry, like leg curls on the, to start a leg day, chains, bands. No one was thinking about high rep sets of delts, partial reps. Like th that's just the tip of the iceberg, like pairing chest and shoulders together. Why arm days are important. Like training calves and pairing it with tibia. Like no one was doing that shit. <laughs> the one arm barbell yeah. row, the meadows row, stretchers, like all of that shit. No one was doing dead stop dumbbell rows ever. <laughs> like one and a half on the hat squat. Again, these are all Bulgarian. Who in the hell besides girls were doing Bulgarian split squats? No. Right. The answer is no dude was doing it until they saw him make Evanson a Pawnee throw up at Elite FTS. And then suddenly everyone's like, Bulgarian split squat. What's that about? <laughs> so on the training side, like that, I almost gloss over that because to me, if you've paid attention to his career, you know how much he's brought to this community. Yeah. And so humility is number one for me all day long. Um, having a business mind within this sport is something else that, you know, I'm not saying he's the only one, you know, I think about guys like Jay Cutler who did it extremely well before and while John was doing it. But in terms of the way he ran mountain dog, the way he had a paid site before anyone else, before it was popular, the amount of quality content he gave out for free that boosted our business. No one was doing that at his, at his level and threshold. Everyone was hoarding the secrets and not telling everyone. Everyone, and again, this isn't me like throwing shade at Hani, for example, but like he kept all his secrets to just his guys. He didn't share a lot of shit. He gave you what he wanted you to see and nothing else. John was like, here's what we do. Go, enjoy, have fun, play, learn, grow. Take what I yeah. taught you and, and branch off. And that that's what I always loved and admired about him was – his just willingness to be, to be, as you said, open and honest and have just conversations with people and not hold back, you know, not to say, oh, well, I found if we run Anadrol at 14 days and then cut it off, it can save your appetite. Man, that's a, that's a gold nugget that n not many people knew before he was talking about that shit. How to time insulin, how to use growth hormone properly. I, all of that shit that, again, is only learned by doing um, so that's two, uh, three to me is just brutal work ethic <laughs> and that's all of life. Mm -hmm. I, I, the thing that made me reach out to him for coaching in the first place was watching him and Dave bang at elite FTS. And I was like, man, yeah. like I relate to that. And again, it goes back to just him being humble. He was like, oh, I'm just a normal national level bodybuilder. Like, I just love to train hard. And I was like, man, like, that's me. Like, it's, I just love to train hard. Cool. Let's do this shit. And yeah. that was at the time, again, ahead of its time. No one was doing that. It was when he was making that popular, everyone was in Flex Magazine, muscular development, the early stages of the internet of bodybuilding. And it, they were only posting like the fluff like the the beauty well he was showing the nitty-gritty and like that's what i loved like mm -hmm. i don't know I, I, again as i said i could talk for hours about this um you know the way he was with his family the way he was with his friends his family the way he treated me for god knows what reason like he was always a leading example of how to live and handle your life as a man in this world to me mm -hmm. oh yeah and, you know so many people, especially in this bodyboarding world, are just absolute dirtbags. They're liars, they're cheaters, they're scumbags. They cheat on their wives. And 
that wasn't him. <laughs> and that's why I think I related to him so much. And mm -hmm. why I've always viewed him as like a big brother to me. So that's an excellent question. Um, to this day, I still miss him. So, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's go ahead. I'm sorry. I think another thing is like, the information he put out wasn't just regurgitated. Yes. It was yes. actual, like, so, yeah, other people's, like, that's the kind of the fun thing with bodybuilding is there's, like, we're all lifting weights, right? Yep. So, like, that's all going to be very similar. But the shit that drives me up a wall is when people go on and talk about, like, how to use gear effectively, and they they all cite what John Jewett put out. Yes. Like, you need to have moderate test, high masterone, and don't do this, don't do that. And these these are the rules. It's like there are zero rules in this game. Like it, it is comical to me, especially when people are talking about I oh my goodness, you see it all the time on like who are you know drug ex experts, but they're like a bikini chick. Yeah. And it's like, what ones have you used? Anavar and <laughs> maybe low dose test? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yes. Like you want to tell me, well, they're like, don't use EQ because it's, you know, it has this, this, and this. It's like, have you used EQ? I once probably one of my favorites, right? I can eat well, I train harder on it, and I grow on it. Cool. Right. And it's minimal side effects. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right? And, it's a, and people demonize the shit out of it because of a study done on rats. Okay. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. You always feel that way about trend, right? All these people who've never used it are like, it's going to give you anxiety. It's going to make you beat your girlfriend or wife. You're, you're not going to be emotionally stable. I'm like, none of those things happen with me. <laughs> yeah, I get stronger. I get more aggressive in the gym. I want to fuck a bunch. And oh, yeah, I'm hard as nails on it. <laughs> those are yeah. all wins to me. <laughs> but yeah. a 40-pound kid who's never even looked at it, couldn't tell you what color it is, is telling you not to use it. Like, yeah moronic is what that is um you know I, I will say one final point here before we move on to the next question something else he always encouraged me to do is be a free thinker and we'll be like mm -hmm. chris just because i tell you to do this if it doesn't feel right don't do it like yeah and that to me was so powerful because he was like i've created this incredible program i want you to do it but i want you to do it intelligently so mm -hmm. if you run into a problem i want you to message me immediately and yeah. if you feel this, or you don't feel that, like what process? Because he, he's like, listen, you're not dumb. You know how to train. So if you do so, if I have you do something that doesn't feel right, we have to modify. And that skill of giving me that green light took my training to the next level and took my body yeah. and development to the next level. Because I think sadly, so many people will look at a program that's written by someone who they admire and they're scared to speak up and say, you wrote it this way, so I'm going to follow it and just ignore pain, n like negative pain. Like, he knew I wasn't running from a set of squats. <laughs> if something didn't feel right, I would tell him, like, hey, that makes my knee feel weird. That, that fucks my low back. Like, okay, cool. Have you thought about doing this, this, and this? Or, hey, I subbed this because my gym doesn't have that piece of equipment. And it was always made me just be intelligent in the gym and listen to my instinct and yep. that's something a lot of guys at his level don't do they're like i'm the fucking king you listen to me or you get the fuck out and yep. that wasn't him <laughs> yeah well that's like the the best part about this like all of us have different canvases yes yep so painting by numbers isn't going to work for it can work to some degree yeah. but you know, and not everybody's going to have a, the same square canvas, you know, so your painting by numbers might not work if it's a, you know, triangle instead of a square. You know, I always, it, this always gets under my skin because I feel like that the coaching landscape we're at now, there's really high level guys who they have a system and you either fit in their system and do well and thrive or you, or, or they fire you or you leave because it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And when you have coaches like you and I who truly treat people as individuals, those new clients have a really hard time wrapping their brain around that. Because they're like, hold on, what do you mean? Like, you're going to make me a plan that's meant for me? And then we're going to modify it if I run into issues? I'm like, yeah. Where these other coaches are like, do this. Here's your next four weeks. Enjoy. Like, mm -hmm. you and I hate that shit. <laughs> yeah. 
here's your peak week plan three weeks away. Enjoy. Hell yeah. yeah. Great right. events, coach. Like those are the emails I hate answering. Hey, what should I get for peak week? All the same shit you eat now. What are we going to need something new? No. How do I know how much to pack? Just a bunch of everything. Well, what does that mean? We'll pack a bunch of everything and then you'll have food for when you come home. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Just <laughs> expect what you're going to be eating. Right. Right. Yeah. You not, not like want to ask program. me, hey, what should I bring you to the show? I'm like, what, what do you got on hand? <laughs> All the same shit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no joke. Oh, ridiculous. All right. Before I start ranting too heavily, let's, let's move on here. All right. So. Uh, it says, what are your personal goals and your bodybuilding journey? What do you want to accomplish, man? Honestly, this has always been a fun one for me because I, I never got in bodybuilding because of a pro card. Me either. Like, I, I got into bodybuilding because I like training hard. And honestly, I would be a better power lifter than a bodybuilder. But I didn't like I didn't like power lifting. Um, so I, I just thought I, I liked how I'm having, you know, the painful sets what bodybuilding brings that, you know, those higher rep sets worth, you know, going heavy and doing that shit. I just enjoyed that. Yeah. Like I naturally kind of just migrated that to myself, like with my own training before I even knew what bodybuilding was, you know? And like, I never paid attention. Like I knew Arnold existed when like, I was, I'm not like saying I didn't know bodybuilding existed, but like when I found out about like Jay Cutler in 2013, when I was going to Zoom, I was like, fuck, that's awesome. I was like, I was like, I didn't know humans could look like that. I was like, that's actually really freaking cool. You can do that, you know. Um, but it wasn't like, oh, I want to be that. And I was like, I wonder what I could do, if that makes sense. So, like, my personal goals is just continue to develop myself. Yeah. Like, that's always been like, it's never been like, oh, I want to be this. It's like, well, I can do better. You know what? What does another year bring? What does another? You know, another m- m- nailed meal, another perfect training session. What does that bring? Yep. You know, that's I, I I see that the progression, the, you know, the progress there is what makes this fun for me. Yeah, and mine is close to that. Uh, I, I'm more towards the tail end of competing, obviously, because my age. Because I'm not, I'm not trying to do this till I'm fifty. I, I say that, but who knows? Who knows where life will bring? <laughs> <laughs> I don't envision doing this at 50. Let's put it that way. Um, but for me, it's it's very similar to you, right? Like, it's all about that personal exploration. And I feel like I'm finally to a point now where my physique is pretty fucking blown out, except for my lats. And I just want that. Like, that that's the last item that I feel like I need to check off. And I may take that to my damn grave, but... That, mm-hmm. Like when I'm looking at my physique, like that's the last body part I'm waiting to just blow out. And yeah, it may never happen, but it's not only because of a lack of effort. I can tell you that. Um, yeah. I, I think too, like you said, like I, I'm always chasing that mental stimulation of going to the next level. How can I get to that next peak of training? How can I take sets further into the deep end? How many meals can I get in a row? Perfect. And I think through that self-exploration is why my coaching continues to evolve is I'm able to learn things by doing and then pass them on to you guys. And like, that's, I love using myself as a guinea pig and then finding cool shit out, passing it down to you. And you're like, man, that's good stuff. And I'm like, hell yeah, it is. Right. <laughs> yeah. And you take it and you show it to someone else. Like, that's the ultimate award or reward. How do you want to look at that for me as a bodybuilder, right? I, I'm never going to yeah. be police. I'm never going to be Ronnie Coleman, but I was once a skinny kid who is no longer that. And mm-hmm. there is way more people out there who are dying to get to our size than have the ability to be Phil Heath, you know? And yeah. if I can pass that on to others and show them like, Hey man, if you just lock in for, this is going to sound intimidating, for 20 years, you can build a physique that'll be wild. Mm-hmm. And I know that doesn't sound what probably most people want to hear. Like, I almost cringe when people say, oh, Chris, like, you have a pro card waiting. You don't know. I don't yeah. know. 
that doesn't fire me up. That doesn't push me out of the bed in the day. Like, no. Yeah. Well, awesome. So I do turn pro and then I go get my ass slaughtered in the open. Okay. <laughs> right. I, I'm not standing next to Nick Walker. I'm going to look like a child. Like, mm-hmm. I think so many people, they chase that shit with no meaning or substance behind it. And it's like, have yeah. you ever thought about what, you know, it's like that dog who chases cars all day. If they actually caught one, what would they do with it? <laughs> yeah. Like, I remember having that conversation with someone and it was like super odd. Uh, she told me she wanted to, she just wanted to get her pro card and then she was done. And I was like, I was like, she's like, yeah, I'll probably train maybe once or twice a week. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, what's the point? You can do that right now. <laughs> like, I could print you off something right now as, as professional. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, yeah. like, what meaning does that have to you? You know, yeah. like, I yeah, it's, you know, it's one of those things that definitely, you know, has a value to it. But it's just like, what, why would you, why would you get that just to end it? Well, yes. That's yeah. like going to college, getting your degree in, you know, political science and then deciding to drive a dump truck for the rest of your life. Yep. Like you can do that. <laughs> but what? why wouldn't you like maybe sign up to be the mayor or something? You know, something in that in that realm of what you've just been working on for the last however long you did it. Yep. You know? You, you know, g- going back to question one about John, that's what I always rem- admired about him. Is even retired, he trained harder than most people do who are actively competing. Mm-hmm. And th- listen, I think so many people like look for like, oh hell yeah, like I- I'm gonna walk away from bodybuilding, and I can't wait to not eat my meals, and I'm just gonna like ch- chill in the gym. Whenever I decide to stop, I'm still gonna show up on Monday and train back hard as fuck, <laughs> and I'm still gonna eat all my meals <laughs> like. Yeah. It's like, oh, thank God this bodybuilding's over. I was like, all right, I'm not gonna be competitive anymore. Like, let's just go in there and let it rip and have fun, have no pressure anymore. Like, who gives yeah. a fuck? Let's just be lean and fucking have fun. Yeah. To not me, have to force not have to force food in the off season. Jesus. Right, right, <laughs> right, right. Or take 47 sticks in a week. Like, awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like my, my life and training will not be that different. <laughs> it no. just suddenly my family and business will come above bodybuilding. <laughs> like yeah. I won't have to be so militant and probably be angry when I'm in the gym or not necessarily angry, but just so locked in laser focused to where I can't even say hello to someone like, yeah. But when the set, when the set starts, it'll still be the same goal. Mm-hmm. It's hard. <laughs> I, yeah. And the fun thing, that's because we love it, right? Like, and I, that's why I always think like the people that say pro core and pro core, I'm like, bro, you don't love this shit. Because as you and I have said multiple times, if we win or lose, we show up on Monday, we're still training hard as fuck. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> still eating our meals. It's all the same yeah. fucking food. Like, and I, I, I understand too that I think so many people reach for that because it's tangible, right? And they're like, okay, yeah. awesome. Check off the list. Add it to my Instagram name. But I believe for you and I, like it's just it, it bodybuilding is so much deeper than a freaking cardboard cutout of that says IFBB mm-hmm. Pro. Like 90% of normal humans would walk by us and think we're a pro as it is. Yeah. Like it's just the truth. Man, you're huge, bro. Thanks. They don't know. They just don't know. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, they have no idea. They're it's such a niche category. It's just like they, they just realize we're different. Yeah, agree. Because you know, which we obviously are. Right on the same token, I'm sure you and I have walked around countless people who are IFBB pros that we don't even know because they don't even have a physique that's worthy of it. Mm-hmm. And that's sad, right? Because they either uh-huh. let their physique go to shit or they won on some weird fluke and don't even know it. Yeah. So, or on the other hand, like. I've had countless clients who turned pro, did one or two pro shows, and just walked away. And there's normal yep. people now. Yep. Don't love it. Didn't love it. Something they chased in the short term. Yep. Again, I'm not saying that's right or wrong, so to speak, but it's just not how yep. you're not. Right? <laughs> this is, this is, like we go back to, there's no rules in this. Like you can do whatever you want. 
I don't really care what you do. Like, you know, if you want to go up there and just get your pro car, like, I don't care. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, agreed. Listen, no matter what, as long as you're progressing and getting better, that's all, I'm happy. I'm thrilled. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm stoked too. Yeah. And I know one you day know? we keep banging this door, it's going to happen. Like, yeah. Even if it doesn't, it still doesn't mean what we accomplish together isn't ex- exceptional. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure John could have walked away and never turned pro and been like, man, I was still had a fulfilling career in mm-hmm. bodybuilding and fun and met so many cool fucking people and experiences and traveled all over the country for Christ's sake. Like, I don't know. It's maybe the side tangent on becoming a pro, but you know. Yeah. All right. Next question here. In your own words, how would you describe your style of coaching? You want to go first? Um, well, I am, I, I'm, I'm pretty strict. Like how strict I am on myself is, is pretty low like how i how strict i am on others is way lower than but i do set very high expectations for people you know if you come to me and your your goal is to lose weight like i'm gonna set i'm gonna i'm gonna expect you to work you know i i have zero want or desire to want you just to coast by you know and you know i'm gonna call you out on your bullshit too when i see it so it's just a matter of making you know little little changes would help you become a better version of what you wanted to be uh, versus like so many there's so many nice guy coaches out there where they're like you know you're you get a check and they're like i i ate 30 out of my 42 meals out of the week because i didn't feel like it like i'm gonna dig a little deep and be like what why like i'm not gonna be like i'm not gonna be a total ass i'm gonna be like i'm not gonna be like you're a fucking failure or whatever but i'm gonna be like what could we have done to make this better? And then how can we go this about this in the future so that we can, you know, do both? Yep. Yep. And I think that's where so many just go like, oh, clients lazy. Fuck them. Yeah. I don't want this. Who cares? Forget it. They've already paid me for the month or for the year or six months, whatever. And that's always a tough pill for me to swallow because I always try to go back and when you have that scenario that you just described and say, okay, why did you come to me in the first place? What triggered you to pay that money to hire me? Because it had to be something. Mm -hmm. You saw an ad on Instagram. You saw a client of mine. You couldn't play with your kids because you were out of breath. Couldn't see your dick when you stood up to piss, like fill in the blank. Divorced, you know, you name it, of all the reasons I've had people come to me. And I was like, lean, let's lean on that. And then, like you said, let, let's dig in. Like, why did you miss 12 meals? Is there something I could do on my end that would make that easier for you? Mm-hmm. Like, can we look at ways to cook your food better? Can we add sauces or seasonings? Yeah. Can we put another shake in there in the end term to get you through this portion? Yeah. And, and if it's a scheduling thing, like there's no, there's no set rules to have six meals a day. No, I've had people. I've had people progress with four, five, yeah. eight. Yeah, you know, like if it that if it comes down to that, like let's figure it out. It's just a game of communicating, and you know what's, and you know that communicating and consistency. Yeah, you know, I I just had one of my good pros this week tell me, Chris, the amount of food you have me on is so ridiculous. I can't eat the last two meals, and I said, okay, cool, like. Talk to me about it. Why? Like, are you eating your last two? And they're like, yeah, I am, but it's miserable. And I said, okay, when are you the most hungry? Like the first four, I'm starving. So I just took a bulk of the food in the last two meals and moved it to the first four and made the last two light as hell. Yeah. That's what they told me today. This is the cakewalk. (laughs) All I had to do is listen. (laughs) Because a a shitty coach would say this, suck it up and deal with it. Mm Mm-hmm. If you want to be better, deal with it. Or I can dig my – or the other lazy approach would be just pulling food and just say, you know what, fuck them. You, you aren't hungry, I'll make you hungry. Yeah. You or you can ask the intelligent question, but okay, cool, like, what is the deal? Is it a food source? Like, what, what would make this easier? And they're like, oh, I'm hungry for the first four meals. Ravenous, actually. Last two, I don't have much of an appetite. All right, awesome. Easy, easy fix on my end. 
mm-hmm. the calories are the exact same. I just mm-hmm. the first four meals are more voluminous. Simple as mm-hmm. that. <laughs> yeah, and you didn't even go into more of a stress response because I'm gonna guess their last two meals come after training. Yes. Figure yep. out wh- why uh, their body's not calming down. You know, and teach them ways to calm themselves down too. Like after, I mean, that comes after moving those meals around, and that that. But in the long term, that also is going to lead to success in that way too. You know, because mm-hmm. we have full control over our, you know, what how we think. Can't control outside, but what what's happening in here? Like we we can manage that really well. You know, yep. and if your body's still all the way up here because it's freaked the fuck out because you just train like an animal and you can't bring it down. You're not going to be hungry. Yep. You know, and that, but... and that always leads to like one of the reasons why I love post lift naps and some sort of adrenal, adrenal product post lift. Yeah. So fun fact for everyone post lift. If you do this, I'm telling you it's going to work. Growth hormone, immediately post lift, some kind of adrenal support on your way home. Eat a meal, take a nap. It's fucking money in the bank. <laughs> yep. I think so many people think we have all these secrets we're holding. I just told you a huge one. <laughs> yeah. Every time when you're in town, that's the exact routine we do. <laughs> yeah. No, 100%. There's a reason. <laughs> and then we meet back in the kitchen two hours later to guess what? Eat another fucking meal. <laughs> yeah, because we're starving. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And or also like a huge one too is like when it comes like like you said there was that that window of time between taking your GH and your adrenal supplement that right at home. Yeah, I see so many people who immediately get out of the gym and they're still fucking dry heaving from their hack squats and they're like, oh god, this meal's so hard to eat. It's like fucking stop it. Correct. Yep. You know, wait. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's white. Like, well, if you're like us and you do intra workout nutrition, your body's fine. You don't need it, right? You're not gonna, you're not gonna, you're not gonna wither away because of a 45 minutes to an hour. Okay. Let that stress come down, you know, and then go eat. Watch how much better it digests. Oh yeah. If you wait for that almost that sign of hunger signaling, mm-hmm. it, it just digests like water. It might as well just flow right through you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Question. Oh, describe my coaching. Um, very similar to what you said. Just brutal truth. Um, I literally care about everyone's progress who pays me. Like, yeah. It, and that's because I always tend to see something in them that I want to get out. Like, when mm-hmm. you look at your goals or or I see something in your physique or your work ethic, I'm like, man, if I can just show this guy or girl the light somewhere, get something mm-hmm. to switch. And then next thing you know, you give me enough time, we'll be able to create something incredible. Yeah. I know in this Instagram world, so many people are quick to share like before and after photos. And and I've never been that way. If you see a before and after photo from me, it's going to be dramatic. Yeah. I always overplay my hand and wait probably longer than I should. Because I want there to be like noticeable, like that's a different human being. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm the same way. Whenever I post those side by sides, it's going to be, I want. I don't want you to be pulling out your magnifying glass and be like, "What's different?" We've all seen those ones where, like, "What's the before? Which one?" Yeah. <laughs> no. This you is- can't. You literally can't tell. You're like, "Did your hair grow longer? What? What happened?" <laughs> yes. Oh, you got three new tattoos. <laughs> I see that. Right. <laughs> so, okay, to answer that question, like. I, I, I feel like I preach the basics. I ride on hard work and consistency. Like Mm -hmm. if you want to thrive in my system, you have to also stay with me long enough to, so I can learn your body. I'm not one of those come to me for a prep, disappear for an all season, come to me for a prep, disappear for an all season or two, do another coach, come back to me. I will do that work. So I'm not going to turn that money down, obviously, but it's not how I prefer to work. I prefer to have long-term clients that we continually build season after season and progress. Yeah. Um, and I've always had that's where the that's where the magic happens. I mean, like, yep. especially like I know I'm I'm a basket case of what my body likes to do different. You know, you know, and if you didn't learn that, like, you're, I'm, 
outcomes are going to be so different. Agreed. You know, like how long it takes for carbs to actually stick to my body or the fact that I wake up watery and go to bed tight. Mm -hmm. The opposite of what happens to most people. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, literally the opposite. Right. Or, or something as simple as what we do your final week. Mm -hmm. um, of, of all the crazy ass protocols I've seen, I feel like your body would just go absolutely haywire. Oh, yeah. Doing, st like I've seen people do like, oh, you have to do 100 rep sets. Or all your sodium has to be high and then super low and then none and then high and water starts getting pulled on Wednesday and you're smashing four different diuretics. Like, good luck hitting that mark. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Just don't, just don't need it. Like, no. You know, or if you even think like when you came to me, how many good coaches would have just written you off and not even thought mm -hmm. twice, that funny time, effort, or energy into you? Mm -hmm. He's just too young. He's got shady genetics. Fuck him. Mm -hmm. like, that would have been so easy for so many people who are high level and do this professionally because they think they're like, oh, show me a young kid and I can tell you if he's going to be good or not. Where I'm always of the mindset, and I think you you have to be this way based upon your own experience. You have no clue until you've given me 10 years of hard work. Yeah. Five years of hard work. Three hard, perfect years. Like, those windows of three, five, 10 years, you can do crazy shit. Mm -hmm. You may not be Flex Lewis, Flex Wheeler, but damn it, we can create something magical. Like, mm -hmm. really cool shit. So... I think having an open mind also goes a long way. And that goes back to a question about John, right? Like, uh -huh. I think, too, something that really benefits me is I have, like, this really naive outlook on people. And I get so hyped when I, like, read their questionnaire when they reach out to me that I'm like, okay, hell yeah, this person's going to follow the plan to the T, and I cannot wait to help them. <laughs> like, it's almost like this giddy kid at Christmas where he thinks he's going to get all the toys, and maybe he only gets three. <laughs> But I'm going to be happy mm -hmm. to tell with those three, man. <laughs> so I think that's how I would describe it. How would you describe my coaching? You you experience it. What is, like, yeah, pretty much exactly what you said. It's no, no fluff, just honest and honest and accurate. Yeah. You know, you know, if you have a question you're going to ask, there's no assuming there's, yeah, you know, communicating and effective game planning. Very obsessive. Yeah. Another word. Very little gray area. Yeah. <laughs> I if we create a game plan, I expect you to execute it. Um, oh yeah. And on the flip side, like you give me enough data and info and feedback so that I can create an effective game plan. Mm -hmm. And we both just believe in it. Like I think I'm really fortunate in this world. Like I don't second guess myself very much in life. And with this coaching thing, like. I don't know if it's an eye or a skill or an art or a gift, but it, or maybe a combination or a synergy of all those things. Like, I mean, you've seen me work in person, where I'll just watch you pose and I'm like, eat this, 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 go yeah. check back in two hours. And I just don't stress about it. Yeah. And I've been around other coaches that like, they'll get out paper and like write things down. Like, oh, no, let's not do this. And I'm like, yeah, let's do this, this, and this. Go now. Just don't think about it. <laughs> so. Well, also, I mean, you also have years of data of what's going to happen, too. Correct. You know, so it's not just it's not just blind faith either. No, yeah, so, yes, yeah, that's true. Yes, <laughs> agreed. <laughs> Very valid point. And I think I think that plays into my strengths too. Is I don't really throw a lot of hell marys, where I think a lot of coaches feel the need to. Mm -hmm. As I've said to you a hundred times, I'd rather you be spot on 95% then shoot for 100 and miss by 20. Yeah. Because I'll take you at 95 all day. Mm -hmm. Just will. I don't, I don't think many people are going to be harder, harder than you. I don't think many people are going to have as balanced of physique, meaning no weaknesses. I don't think many people are going to have practiced their posing as hard or done their cardio as effectively. Like, So you at 95, I'd rather hit there to 98 than to try to shoot for 100 and make you miss. Like, Yeah. And I just believe in that. Mm. And I, I learned that from Chris Alito many years ago on a podcast, him and Dave Palumbo talking about it. Yeah. 
you shoot for that moon, but you better know if you overshoot it or undershoot it, you're fucked. <laughs> and I've always thought if I have you hard at two weeks, cruise in, we're good. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of my thought. All right, final question here. What are our thoughts on DC training? Big fan. The principles of that are like they are what do they that's what builds muscle. Yes. Like it's very uncomplicated. I right, pick three to five basic movements, what you can progress on. And it's one of those things. I don't remember who said this quote, but like if you take anybody and you put them in the gym and you had them bench, squat, dip, leg press, right? And they did like the first day in the gym, there was one plate on the bar on every movement, let's say, just across the board. If you took that guy and you gave him food, and you legitimately just gave him food, and the next year he went from one plate to three plates, what's going to happen <laughs> while he's feeding up? <laughs> right. right? Pretty fucking simple. Right. Yes. You get stronger out of movement in the bodybuilding rep ranges while eating food, you're going to grow. Like, very basic principle there. You know, and then the uh like like I said, three to five basic movements yes. per body part, right? It's we're not we're not throwing 20 things in there. We're not doing all these crazy crazy things. We're also not doing a lot of it's not isolation movements, right? We're not doing our sideways chest press, you know. Like because the, there's no uh, there's the very the opportunity for added load is not there. Yes. You're just adding uh stimulus. <laughs> of what you can't really change right. you know good luck progressing that sideways chest press from one plate to four plates <laughs> you gotta get the two and a half out <laughs> yeah yeah so I it's know. like yeah. i agree with you you know definitely I, one of the one of the, and then i think the underlying thing about dc training the entire bottom line is effort yes so yeah. that sits very well with me like there might be, I, I honestly don't think there's a set rule. Like, that's not the golden standard of things. Because like we said, we're all different creatures. But, like, the underlying effort is effort. Yeah. <laughs> Going to get you pretty goddamn far. Yeah. You know, you know, I think what I love about it instinctually is this. It forces you to take rest days. Yeah. It's one of those six or seven days a week training because you can't do that. <laughs> If your effort is there, which is also a reason that I hate it, is because I don't feel like most people's effort is there. <laughs> yeah. So it's a double edged sword. But yeah. the principle, if you took a young kid or an untrained individual, so to speak, that had no injuries, I think it would be one of the more optimal ways for them to train without having a coach every day take them through workouts. Mm -hmm. right because you have that log book to chase so instinctually you're having to beat reps or increase the weight mm -hmm. so great premise mm -hmm. um, i still i mean i still believe that what as you said three to five exercises per body part and you pick exercises that you connect to that muscle and that are challenging mm -hmm. and good shit happens like yep. you know the weighted stretches the Widowmaker sets, rest pause, all that stuff is gold, right? Mm -hmm. If done, again, with proper effort and intensity and proper exercise selection, I think also another proponent of it is it forces you to stick with a set, certain set of exercises to where you don't get training ADHD, which is mm -hmm. scroll your phone, find a workout, and go do it. You know on Monday or that day you're going to do a pull-down, two heavy rows, a deadlift, and a weighted stretch. Mm -hmm. And you think about that shit all day. And it's like, okay, cool. Like on dumbbell rows, I did 150s for 10 last week. I get at least 11 each arm. Awesome. You have something tangible you can track. Now, the great thing is like when you get to write like plus three, I say I hit 13 on my right arm and 12 and a half on my left. That's a cool thing to be able to like, boom, check, done. I got better today. Mm -hmm. Now, on well, again, this is the double edged sword. So many young kids out there are sacrificing their form to beat that logbook. Yeah. 
you have to hold yourself. Or they're sacrifice or the opposite of that. They're sacrificing having perfect form and it's taken away from the intensity. The That's amount of people I see who think they have to squeeze a leg press up versus just driving it up. Like what's going to happen? If you ju- like your quads know how that's that's how they work. Their job is to straighten your leg out. Right. Like you don't have to think about it. No. No, I'm good. You know, so like if that's taken away from your intensity, it's like, oh, now you definitely two sides of the coin there. You no, know, I can tell you this, especially on legs. I have never once thought about squeezing my legs up on a leg press, hack squat, barbell squat, lunge, none of that shit. I thought control the negative and stand the fuck up. <laughs> yep. Yep. And yet yep. the people that are preaching that stupid shit don't have big legs. <laughs> mm-hmm. Shocker. Right. Like, so yes, I think as a whole with DC, I'm, I'm all about it. Um, I, I think the only probably downsides is if you have a bunch of injuries, like you have to be careful. And I think Dante's even spoke about this in detail. Like you just have to take your rep ranges North. Yeah, like, and you still try to beat the logbook. You still try to get better at the exercises. You just have to take the rep ranges north, and you might have to be smarter with exercise selection and also exercise sequencing, right? So, you may no longer be able to say heavy barbell deadlift off the ground, but can you do barbell hyperextensions, or you know instead of bent over barbell rows, can you do a braced like one arm barbell row or a dumbbell row, something to where your lower back gets taken out of it? Like, I think at the end of the day, like as you and I preach on here any training system can be effective as long as effort is applied rest is applied and food is applied Mm -hmm. so fill in the blank with fst7 giant sets standard bro split i believe all of it can work yeah and i think the ones that work the best are the ones you can enjoy you like getting after you know like if you gave me you know high volume I would do it. I would for sure do it, but I wouldn't love it as much as I like doing the low volume you have me doing. Yep. You know? So and that's why I navigate towards that is because I like it more. Mm-hmm. You know? So that's a huge driver of your performance is your attitude. Yes. You know? And how you choose to see things, right? If you come into the work and you're like, oh, this is going to suck versus like, oh, this might be painful, but I'm going to get better today. Like, which one's going to lead to a better outcome? Right. Yeah. You know, I can remember back when I was hammering with John, and we would go lying our seated leg curls to chain squats with mm-hmm. either a yoke bar, a spider bar, or a barbell. I would remember sitting down on that leg curl and looking at my buddy, and I'm like, God, I cannot wait to get through this leg extension or leg curl to do those squats. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I would be craving that shit. I'd, be, I'd show up to the gym. To train people at 5 a.m. And I would be looking forward to it. Is it 1230 yet? Is it 1230 yet? Like, I cannot wait. At 1245, I'm going to be in that fucking squat rack with chains on the bar. Like, there's a reason my body progressed so well. And I believe it's because of that. Like, I'm sure some scientists will tell me that what we were doing was suboptimal. But I can tell you this. I had a ton of fun and I grew like a weed. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So, the answer. DC training, I think you and I both are for it. Uh, if it excites you, if it fires you up to have a log book and carry it around and do the same exercises week after week, by all means, attack it. Don't look back. Don't question it. Just go. And then you'll find your groove with it. In my mind, like with all training, you just have to give it enough time. Mm-hmm. Enough time isn't six weeks. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's always what makes me laugh, right? People are like, well, this is boring to do the same thing. It's like, have you ever been bored? Like it's like one of those things. If you're giving a hundred percent of your it, your effort into something, you can't be bored. Agreed. Like, go grab a needle and thread and try to stick it in the fucking hole. It's gonna take you three minutes, and that three minutes is gonna go like this yep. because you're focused. You're focused on it. Yep. Right. If you're if you're focused on your workout, like you are trying to do that, yep. right? Because you can't do this and not be focused. By the way, you yep. can't scroll Instagram and thread a needle it's the same concept with working out like you it's not going to happen you like you can go through the motions for sure but you can't have that level of focus what's needed to have maximal effort yes 
I'll give you this as an example. My last four years of football, I could have told you to the second what we were going to do for practice every day. Mm-hmm. Because it was the same as when I was a freshman, when I was a junior and a senior, sophomore. All of it was the same. Monday through Friday, the prep was the same. And guess what? I still showed up every day and loved every second of that shit. Yeah. I would have given anything to go back into that when it was over. I, and I think like that's what taught me how to do bodybuilding so well. It was like, if I do the same thing every week, every day, and give my absolute best, I will get better at it. Yep. And that is the life lesson for this episode for everything in your life. <laughs> Funny how that works, right? Mm-hmm. You get better at business, do that shit at maximal effort for a year and then repeat it and then mm-hmm. repeat it. Or tired of being like a shitty spouse, like, hey, go buy your wife or girlfriend flowers every Monday. Every Monday. Don't miss one. See what happens. Yep. It's kind of like that joke that's obviously going around the internet. So like, I've never heard a marriage get worse the more blowjobs your girlfriend gives you, the husband. Like, <laughs> Like, yeah. Funny how that works, right? I, I've never seen a bodybuilder not get better if they train their dick off and eat their meals. Mm-hmm. Same premise. Like, yeah. Like, everyone wants to know what your secret is to that. Just repeat it weekly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Another good episode. It's 10 o'clock. I'm going to fall asleep if I don't get off here. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. All right, guys. Until next time, Will Dave, Chris, we are done.